and welcome to York River State Park. I'm Ranger John Gresham and today just want to show off just a little portion of our park. Um, right now our Fossil Beach is closed and will remain closed probably until maybe the first of May or last of April. But I want to show you uh, the Saning Beach area, which right now we're at a high tide. In fact, we're at a, a coastal flood advisory. But this trail is what we take to come out to the Saning Beach, and the trail is a pretty nice one. A um, couple of things to point out along this trail. With the constant rising of the tide, uh, there will be more and more salt water affecting the root system of the trees along the shoreline. So this, I think it may have been a red maple, um, is not very tolerant of salt water um, as it affects the roots. So unfortunately, this red maple did not make it. However, we look a little closer and you can see this shrub here, this evergreen shrub. This is wax myrtle. And wax myrtle is an indicator species. It lets us know that we're going from a hardwood um, ecosystem where we would have a good amount of fresh water such as a freshwater stream or a pond and we're coming into brackish water or water that has been mixed with salt water so as you can see we're going closer and closer to the york river in fact the york river is just a stone's throw away from here so whenever you see this shrub you're going to know that you're going from um, fresh water to brackish water and in the late spring, uh, late summer going into early fall, these shrubs will have little bluish grayish berries at the end. And the berries were at one time crushed and boiled and would give off this oil. And the oil would be skimmed off, mixed with beeswax to form bayberry scented candles. So that's where your bayberry comes from. Now, if you're hiking anywhere in eastern Virginia, look out for these guys sticking up out of the ground. These are root knees, and the root knees are a part of this bald cypress tree. Um, you'll see more and more bald cypress as you go into southeastern Virginia, places like the Great Dismal Swamp, um, also First Landing State Park will have a lot of bald cypress trees. And right here in James City County, the other side of James City County, the Chickahominy River and the different creeks that feed into the Chickahominy River will be filled with bald cypress. And we got a couple other root knees sticking up as well. And oh, yeah, I got some there as well. And again, just looking at the water coming in with the tide, and this is going to be brackish water, combination of fresh water and salt water. And some plants are going to be a little bit more resistant than others. Um, I'm not exactly sure how resistant this bald cypress is going to be. I think eventually that bald cypress is going to have a problem with the water salinity, but right now that cypress tree is standing and standing strong. Oh, now here's something unique. This large tree I'm not exactly sure how old that thing is. 
We had a tree on our property um, here at the park called the Majestic Oak. And according to foresters, the Majestic Oak was actually um, estimated to be about 400 years old. That tree eventually fell because of a rot kind of like this. Um, that tree fell about four years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, and more evidence of that rising tide. And yeah, that is a red maple. And again, the red maple's roots, as long as the root system can tap down into a source of fresh water, this red maple is going to be able to survive to a degree. But again, if we get more and more um, salt water coming in um, with these coastal flooding events, eventually this red maple is going to go the way that those other red maples went um, that are closer to the shoreline. All right, headed up the stairwell, and we'll go over to Woodstock Pond, and we'll take a look at the great blue herons and where they are nesting.